the game plan for your money as we kick off the first full trading day of the second half of the year. We're going to debate that with the investment committee full desk here at Post 9. We have Joe Terranova, Jenny Harrington, Steve Weiss, and Jim Labenthal. But first, a check on the markets right now. You're going to see red across the board right now. All three indices down fractionally right now. The Nasdaq down about a quarter of a percent. The Dow, however, the hardest hit. Looking at the 10-year, that's where we're really seeing some movement right there. The, year, the yield there jumping almost 20 basis points in just the past week. Of course, we are waiting for those Fed minutes coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern. And right now, as we begin this conversation, two things I want to point out to you guys. First off, the Russell, the small caps, the hardest hit out of all the indices, down almost a percent off of its lows. But the VIX actually reaching its highs for this session, up more than 3 percent. Joe, you're right here. What do you make of this on the first full trading day of the year to see volatility spike up a very different story than we saw in the first half of the year? Look, two very strong quarters consecutively to begin the year. Uh, you, you, you can't dismiss the premise that at some point you are going to have a correction for the markets. How deep is the correction going to be? I think it's going to be very shallow in its nature. And I believe barring a geopolitical shock, 2023 will be a very strong year for, for equities. Uh, but the catalyst for the type of correction that I'm uh, speaking towards, I think it comes in the Treasury market. I think it comes with a 10-year Treasury getting back above 4 percent, a two-year Treasury getting back towards the March highs at 5 percent. That would be the area of the market that I'm focused on. I think the news this morning regarding uh, weakness in the Chinese economy, in particular for the services industry, that's more about the commodity story. And I think that's more evidence why you want to ensure that your portfolio has the exposure to mega caps and to technology, because it seems to me until China is able to really reopen with strength and contribute to eco global economic growth, that commodity story is going to be under pressure, whether it's agriculture, oil or steel. All right. So he's looking at just basically that picture right now. Jenny, I'm talking to you now. We're seeing volatility up just a bit. We also talked about this rally broadening out a bit, but again, on the first full trading day of the year, it's the small caps that are getting hit. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a whole six months ahead, right? We've got six months under our belt, six months ahead. And one of the things that you and I were talking about before the show started, Frank, was the unbelievable divergence and bifurcation in returns. Right. So I think, you know, a day or two here doesn't make a market, but it's pretty wild thinking about what happened in the first quarter, how the NASDAQ was up 31 percent, S&P was up 17 percent. Um, the Russell Equal Weighted Index was only at five. So when, when Joe said, um, when Joe said there's a high likelihood for a correction in equities, I think that that correction could be as bifurcated and as divergent as the rally was in the first half. So looking at this and thinking about small caps, it's just stunning. I mean, here's another the, thing that in is the, in the upcoming quarter, in the upcoming the quarter or second half. I mean, it could be the whole second more half. More like no, statistically, it's more likely that you're going to get the correction in calendar quarter okay. three. Actually, calendar no, yeah, quarter right. four is historically a very strong quarter. You're right, because everyone's gone in the summer and volumes dry up and, you know. Um, but on the small cap thing, it's so shocking to me. So I'm looking at current valuations versus 20-year averages. Small cap value is trading at 90 percent of their 20-year average PE, large cap growth is trading at 144%. So, so I don't really worry about small cap today. I just look at that and think, holy smokes, it's undervalued. I want to jump off something Jenny just mentioned, the S&P equal weight. Uh, Savita Subramanian of B of A coming out with a note saying in part, we expect the breadth to continue to broaden out as seen in June. And she expects the equal weighted index to outperform the cap weighted index in the second half, very early in the second half. Obviously, today we're not seeing that just yet. But do you believe we're going to see the market continue to broaden out, Steve? You know, it, uh, we could. It's natural because you've had, you know, those narrow set of stocks that have done so well. So then you've got to see some catch up from the others. Um, you know, I, I think what's interesting today is that it's, you know, when you talk about small caps, small caps have had a great run lately. So it's not unusual for them to give up some ground, particularly this being a holiday short week, actually, some say a holiday week. So the liquidity is just not there, and they generally are less liquid. So I think that explains that. Like Jenny, you can't draw a trend from one day. Uh, I think, though, more are looking for a correction. And now that they've done, got such a great first half that if you play the right stocks, that's equal to a couple of years' performance. And it's very unusual, as you know, for stocks to have that kind of performance when you've seen rates move up as they have. So I think people are getting more nervous about the market, to Joe's point, look for that correction this quarter. Um, 
but you're lapping some pretty aggressive uh, inflation numbers. So you should see inflation indicators start to moderate, particularly rents, uh, labor. I don't know if you will. I mean, take a look at UPS today and uh, the strength of the unions and of the labor force. They're still able to command pretty good wages. So, so overall, yeah, it should broaden because that's just natural, you know, right. way things go when you see markets move up. 